I've got a $20 bill here. I can buy stuff. But wait, this is just a piece of paper. Who says anyone will trust that this is worth 20 bucks? Money is only useful if at least two people agree that it can be trusted. A new documentary asks, what makes money trustworthy? It has to be reliable, like a clock, says Steve Forbes. So it has to be fixed in value, 60 minutes an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. Imagine if that floated each day. That would make life chaotic. So throughout history, people needed a way to assign a fixed value to money. Well, the best mechanism for this would be some kind of commodity that's permanent, easily transported, easily understood by everyone, and that medium was, of course, gold. Not of course. People have pegged money to agricultural crops or salt. That's where we got the word salary. But gold was more reliable. And once it was accepted as currency. Money begins to create a kind of mobility in people's lives that they never had before. But gold's heavy. It's hard to carry around. That limited trade. So people invented banks. The Knights Templar developed a system where he said, well, you can just deposit your money here with us. And then when you need some, you can withdraw it from your account. This enabled the peasants to travel Europe without being a danger of being robbed. That enabled much more trade. You could sell a bond in London and build a railroad in India. And as a result, the seemingly resource-poor speck of Europe became the financial center of the world. Then in the U.S., Alexander Hamilton fixed the dollar to gold. The dollar became to be seen as a rock-solid currency where you could go anywhere in the world, and they would accept that dollar. And the world boomed. Wages soared. It was an incredible period of wealth creation. Don't get me wrong, there were examples of terrible deprivation and hunger, but it was a time of great material progress, and the monetary foundation of that progress uh, lay in the gold standard. But as usual, rulers would debase the currency. The Emperor Nero. They would call in all the coins, melt them down, reissue them, of course, with his picture on them. But with less gold. Rome's decline was very closely associated with the decline of its money. When you change the value of money, you're stealing property. That happened in Germany after World War I. To print money to pay for the conflict, Europe and the U.S. went off gold. And after losing the war, Germany suffered the infamous Weimar hyperinflation. We said to Germany, you have to pay back the world. The nation's government certainly couldn't pay that much money, so Germany began to print and print it too much. You go to a restaurant and you find that your meal is going to cost 8,000 marks, say, and you order it, you eat it, and by the time the bill comes, that 8,000 marks has become 16,000 marks. In the United States around that time, politicians created our own crisis. President Herbert Hoover signed into law the Smoot-Hawley Tariff. Its sweeping taxes on thousands of foreign products triggered a global trade war. This set in motion events leading to the Great Depression. With millions unemployed, governments searched for solutions. They tightened the money and the country literally ran out of money. So in some towns, there was no money left. The bank closed. I am going to establish a government market for gold. Franklin Roosevelt, in an attempt to revive a struggling U.S. economy, confiscated private holdings of gold and devalued the dollar. So all kinds of constitutional freedoms and this moral commitment to maintain the value of the money were swept out. Roosevelt really didn't know what to do, so he kind of tried every theory, the way people will do, like a cook in a kitchen, trying different spices. Near the end of World War II, Western governments met to try to stabilize currencies. The world returned to gold-based money. And it was enormously successful. Those two decades from 1950 to 1960, were the most successful economically of any time. But then, again, a president abandoned the gold standard. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar. The value of the dollar plunged. Since then, the dollar has lost more than 80% of its value. That's one reason that today... Some believe the future lies in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin is both a currency and a payment system. So it's like PayPal and US dollars combined into one. But so far, cryptocurrencies' price changes make them hard to use as currency. Can we transact with Bitcoin today? Oh, I'll pay you 20 Bitcoin if you come to work for me. That will be your annual salary. Was it the Bitcoin that was worth 980 at the beginning of 2017 or the Bitcoin that was worth 22,000 when 2018 began? So what does the future hold? Here's the documentary's concluding argument. The only way to restore trust is for the United States to return to the system that worked for most of its history. Gold has proven to be the preferred monetary standard. These days, most economists oppose a gold standard. Milton Friedman opposed it. But this documentary will give you background to help you decide what you think. After all, we do need sound money with a stable value. All this is the struggle for trust, and money ultimately does depend on trust. You can see the full documentary on some PBS stations or stream it at inmoneywetrust.org.